Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we're going to be implementing a custom validation directive for a template-driven form. So let's remember that in our login page we want to create a custom password strength directive that is going to work in a very similar way like the required directive here. We are going to be applying here a password strength attribute and this is going to apply to this input field directive that is going to make sure that the field is only valid if the password is strong enough. We already have written here the password strength validator function. So it's this function here that returns null if the password is strong enough and that it returns this error object if the password is not valid. Using this validator function, we are now going to be implementing our custom validation directive. We are going to go here to our application folder and we're going to be creating here a new directory. Let's call it simply directives and inside it we're going to be creating a new file. This new file is going to be called passwordstrengthdirective.ts. So let's now implement our custom directive. We're going to start by defining here an Angular directive class. It's going to be called password strength directive, just like the file name. Now we're going to apply it the Angular directive decorator. Let's go ahead and import the directive decorator and let's pass it its configuration object. So we are going to be defining here the selector for our directive. So this directive is going to be applied to any element of our template that has the password strength attribute applied to it. So just like the password field here in our login form. If this attribute is applied to a given element, then the directive is going to be instantiated. Let's then define the selector using the attribute syntax. Let's wrap this in angle brackets and with this we have defined our selector. Let's now go ahead and implement our directive. So this directive is going to be a validator directive. So let's go ahead and let's implement here the validator interface. So this interface is from the Angular Forms package and it needs to be implemented by any directive that is integrated with Angular Forms. This is what is going to allow the directive to validate our form field. Let's go ahead and let's implement the only method of the directive, which is going to be the validate method. So the validate method is going to take as input parameter the abstract control. So that is the control that is being validated, in our case, our password field. And here we need to return as the output of the validate method either a set of validation errors if there is a problem with the value of the form field or null in case that the form field is valid and there are no errors. Now, if you remember, this signature here is very similar to the password strength validator function that we have implemented before. So the validator function is here, it's this function returned here, and as we can see, the signature is the same. It takes as input one control and returns as error either validation errors or null. So here in our password strength directive, all we are going to do is to return the output of calling our validation function. So let's go ahead and let's call here create password strength validator. This is going to create a validation function on the fly. Now notice that this call here to create password strength validator, the only thing that it did was to create the validation function, but it did not actually validate the form control value. In order to get the result of the validation, we need to call the function. So we need a different set of parentheses. And here we need to pass in the abstract control. So the output of this will be the validation result. And that is what we need to return here in the output of validate. So we first do one call here to create the validation function and then we call the validation function with control to get the validation result. 
And with this, we have implemented the password strength directive, so now all we have to do is to register it in our application. Let's go ahead and let's search here for our application root module, for example, and let's add the directive here in our declarations array. And with this, our password strength directive is now ready to be used. So here in our login component, we are already applying the password strength directive. We can see it here on the password field. Let's now display an error message to the user whenever the password is not strong enough. So we are going to be using a similar method to what we have done here before. We are going to be adding inside the material form field here a new material error. This material error is only going to be visible if the password is not strong enough. So we are going to be accessing here the password field via the export of the ng model directive. And let's go ahead and let's access password.errors. And because this might not be defined, let's use here the Elvis operator and let's go ahead and let's check for the presence of the password strength attribute. So if you remember, if the password is invalid, then the validator function here is going to return an object containing the password strength property set to true. So that's what we are testing here in our template. We are checking for the presence of a password strength attribute on the errors object linked to the password field. If the password is not strong enough, we are going to show to the user the following error message that I'm going to paste in. Your password must have lowercase, uppercase and numeric characters. Let's also quickly add here another material error uh, mentioning that the password is mandatory. So I'm going to copy here the material error that we have added for the email and I'm going to apply it here on the password field as well. So here we are going to access the password field and if the password is not filled in, we are going to show the message to the user the password is mandatory. With this, we are almost ready to try out our password strength validator. We just forgot a small thing to add here to our password strength directive. So if we try this directive as it is without any further modification, this will not work. And this is because we need to inform Angular that this is not only a normal Angular directive, but that this is specifically a form field validation directive. And we do that via the Angular dependency injection system. So here on the providers property of our directive, we are going to register this directive as a form field validation directive. And we do so by adding this directive to the list of directives that the Angular framework already knows that are meant for doing form validation. We can do that by adding here a new provider. We need to provide a value associated to the ng validators injection key. So let's go ahead and let's import that. And let's use here the use existing property to point to the value that we want to link here to the injection key, which is our directive class. Now, there are multiple types of directives that are used for form validation. This is just one more. So we don't want to replace completely the content of the ng validators injection key. Instead, we want to add a new value linked to that same key. So we are going to be using here the multi property, meaning that this uh, validation key is meant to contain multiple values and not only one and we're going to set it to true. This way the password strength directive is going to be added to the array of known form field validators instead of replacing the whole array with a single value. So that's how we use the Angular injection system in order to register as directive as being a form field validation directive. And with this, we have completed our password strength directive and we are now ready to try it out. Let's then switch here to a larger screen and try this out. So we already have here the form pre-filled in with a valid email. Let's go ahead and try the password field. First, let's clear the field and click away from it. So as we can see, we get the error, the password is mandatory as expected. Now let's start filling in here some values for our password. For example, only lowercase values. As we can see, we get the message, your password must have all these types of characters. 
Now, what happens if we go back and we add here an uppercase character? Still, the error shows up. Now, if we add a list one numeric value, and we can see the value that we are typing in here, now the password field is going to be considered valid and all the error messages are going to be hidden. And we have here our login button enabled as usual. And with this, we have now learned how to create our own custom form field validator for a template driven form. Next, we are going to learn another very commonly needed functionality. We are going to learn what to do when we run into the situation where we have multiple error fields that are valid at the same time for a given form field. Should we display them all? Should we display only one error at a time? We're going to learn how to solve that problem in our next lesson.